At this point, I've spoken at more medical student conferences and events than I can count, and partly that's because I've spoken at a lot, partly it's because I can't count very high. But without any exception, the single most commonly asked question I get is, how do I get into research? And that's fair, because rightly or wrongly, research is a gatekeeper. It opens doors, whether that be to training, to academic posts, competitive specialties, things like surgery. But here's the real fundamental problem. Most of the people asking me that question aren't setting themselves up for success. And let me explain why. One of the most common emails I get through my website's contact form, which you can use if you want some advice or want me to help with an idea or just to send me some feedback, one of the most common emails I get goes something like this. Dear Dr. Burton, I really need a research project that will lead to a paper because I want to do surgery. Or Dr. Burton, I need to boost my portfolio to get into a competitive specialty. Can you help me get a paper? Now, I do try to reply to every message that I get and every email I get, I really do. But if I am gonna let something slide, it's probably gonna be that. Not because I'm being rude, but because responding to an email like that, for me, is really cognitively hard. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're capable of doing. I don't know most fundamentally what you're actually asking me to do. So the email gets parked and in many cases, eventually deleted. And if that's true for me, then it's even more true for someone more senior or more stretched than I am. But to turn this around and give some good news, this is fixable. Because if you want to maximize your chances of getting a yes, or at least getting a reply, then here are five things that you can do that I think can make a world of difference. So item number one is tell me who you are because context matters. Are you a medical student? What year are you in? Are you a foundation doctor? Are you based in the UK? Are you an IMG? Are you somewhere else? Because the more I know or the person receiving your message knows, the better I can judge what kind of support you might need and whether I'm the right person to give it at all. So let's start drafting our email together. So example, Dear Dr. Burton, my name is Ollie. I'm a first year medical student at the University of Warwick. Simple, clear, helpful. First year medical student started in their studies in the preclinical stages, unlikely to have any significant experience or knowledge of the career, a specialty, the science, whatever. But it tells me a baseline of where they might be operating. Item number two or tip number two, come with an idea. Because saying I need a project is not gonna cut it because the reality is for people like me, for people that you're gonna be emailing, I've already got a very long list of people that I need to support or I'm currently supporting or that I want to support in the future. If I have a new idea that I think is good or worth doing or publishable, then I'm either gonna do it myself or I'm gonna give it to someone that I know and trust or have a vested interest in helping. I'm not gonna give it to some random person who's contacting me, right? So if you want in, you need to bring something to the table. And if you don't have a concrete idea yet, start by reading some papers. You can ask subject experts where the gaps in the field are. Always, for example, check the future directions or limitations sections of any journal article that you read because that's where the next research ideas or the next things that need to be done in a given specialty tend to live. So again, coming back to our example, uh, I'm interested in patient perceptions of simulation training in neurosurgery. I've seen uh, Newell et al's work on simulator validation, but I haven't found much on how patients perceive this kind of training or whether they find it acceptable, and I'd like to explore that a bit further. Now we're talking, right, because I know what you're interested in. I'm starting to piece together whether or not I am interested in the same thing that you're interested in, whether I have any knowledge that I can contribute to that piece of work, or if I don't, maybe link you to someone who does. Because you've given me an author and some work that I might already be familiar with, in a small specialty, especially something like neurosurgery, chances are I might know the author on that paper. I might have gone to medical school with them, I might have worked in the same neurosurgical unit as them. Literally, just by adding that couple of lines, we have drastically increased the chances that I can do something with what you've sent me. Which then brings us on to tip number three, be clear about the ask. Fundamentally, what do you want? 
from the person that you're emailing. Is it supervision? Is it feedback? Is it a meeting? Is it a connection to someone else like we've just been talking about? Spell it out, make it really easy for them either to say yes, they'll help you, or to direct you to someone who can help you. Revisiting our example, I would like to investigate this problem using mixed methods, be that surveys, interviews, that sort of thing. I haven't done this kind of work before, and I'd really value some senior guidance on the methods I might choose. Would you be willing to meet for a short Teams call? Or if not, would you be able to point me towards someone who might be able to help? This is clear, it is respectful, it is highly actionable. It is super easy for that email to land in my inbox. I can spend 30 seconds skimming it. The ask of what they want from me is clear. And because they've spelled it out so clearly, I'm much more inclined to make the effort and take the minute or two that it will take to formulate a response and action that for them. It costs me comparatively nothing for myself, right, at this point in my career, I'm now FY4, four years post-graduation. I'm about to start specialty training, but lots of my colleagues are already in specialty training. I've got friends in loads of different specialties and in loads of different centers in the UK, in America, Canada, abroad. If someone has a really clear ask, I just want to be connected with someone who works in dermatology or in orthopedics or GP really really easy for me to do for you and help make that connection no problem at all then tip number four is show what you bring at this point you're trying to sweeten the deal essentially really reeling the person in you do not need a 10 page cv but it's really helpful to know what skills you already have it helps me to judge how much support you will need and how realistic the project is if you've done any audits, you've maybe read some stuff about statistics, if you've presented a poster at a conference or you've already done any work within the specialty, now is your chance to say so. For an example, I'm comfortable with basic statistics using SPSS. I've attached a short academic CV and included a few examples of my previous work. My most recent presentation was on XYZ. My most recent presentation was on cervical spine anatomy extrapolated from CT scans. My most recent academic output was a poster presentation at a national conference on C-spine anatomy from CT scans under this professor at this unit. Because now this combination of things is really, really giving me something to go on. I know what stage you're at, I know what skills you have, I know what you're interested in, I know what you're trying to achieve, and I know who you've already worked with or what level you're at. If you're already at the stage of being able to present or having published, then this is now much more of a goer because we both know how the process works and I can really, really focus the type of advice and help that I provide. Tip number five and maybe the most important of all, be polite and show some appreciation. Here is the honest truth and time for potentially a bit of tough love. From the get-go, you have to be comfortable with the fact that nobody owes you their time, especially if they are not already formally supervising you or teaching you. Every single cold email you send like this is asking for a favour, and the best, the most you can reasonably expect from anyone is merely a reply. So show some grace, say thank you, acknowledge the time and effort that you're asking for on the part of the other person and you will be amazed at how far that goes. If someone emails me and they are rude or disrespectful or they do not appreciate that what they're asking is a very significant input of my time, then it doesn't get a reply in the bin. So some final thoughts just to tie everything together. If you are serious about getting into research or trying to get into academic medicine, take the time to write a proper email introduce yourself, bring an idea, be clear about the ask, show what you can already do, and most importantly, be respectful of people's time. Because the truth is that most of us, and probably the overwhelming majority of us in medicine, want to help, but we need a reason to say yes. We cannot take on everything. We would destroy ourselves if we did. So what we need is something that is a good idea, that is workable and is interesting or gonna make things better for patients. That's what will usually work for us. And if this video helped you shape your idea and your email, 
please feel free to reach out the right way. You can contact me through the form on my website, which is at ollieburton.com. It'll be linked in the description below. And I can't promise that I'll reply to everyone, but I do read them all. And if you write a thoughtful, well-crafted email, you have already done more than most people ever will. So good luck, get writing, and I want to hear about your successes. Let me know down in the comments what has worked for you. Let's share our strategies together. This is what has worked for me over many years of trying and failing, but get out there and do some cool research. So thank you very much, guys. Take care, bye-bye.